their contracts under which they produced viruses that were descriptively and functionally identical to HIV about a decade and a half before it was allegedly discovered. And I show you that overseeing their contract was Dr. Robert Gallo. The book goes in, the book Emerging Viruses, AIDS and Ebola, and the video called Emerging Viruses and Vaccinations lays out how Gallo, who in 1984 was credited for having discovered the first AIDS virus, actually oversaw Lytton Bionetics in the production of these types of viruses in 1969, 70, 71. Just perfectly timed for the international AIDS pandemic that was apparently according to all the evidence, in fact, the contracts I've also reprinted in the book Emerging Viruses, the Merck Pharmaceutical Company's contract. Now, Merck is a player. 300 years the history goes back. They're the royalty's premier pharmaceutical firm, the Merck Company is. One of the world's leading drug makers today and the top vaccine manufacturer of the world, whose president, George W. Merck, during Roosevelt's time, was appointed by Roosevelt. Roosevelt, three now Pentagon officials have come out in recent years and said he knew two weeks in advance that Pearl Harbor was going to be bombed in order to get America into the war. I read you Roosevelt's articulation and inscription on his memorial about the new world order, the few rulers. It's nothing orderly, it's chaos. He was an inside player. He appointed George W. Merck to run America's biological weapons industry. And that, at the time that the massive Nazi war chest, the lion's share of it, went to the Merck Pharmaceutical Company. Did you hear what I said? At the end of World War II, while George W. Merck was America's biological weapons industry director and also director of the Merck Pharmaceutical Company, a lion's share of the Nazi war chest went to the Merck Pharmaceutical Company. Now, why is that important? Because it was the Merck Pharmaceutical Company's hepatitis B, hepatitis B vaccine, that according to all the scientific evidence, the unique epidemiology, that is the unique outbreak on two far removed continents, gay men in New York City and blacks in Central Africa, two totally demographically distinct populations. I mean, there's virtually nothing the same in those two populations that they would, in 1978, see the first AIDS cases, then called GRID, gay-related immune dysfunction, that that was precisely who received the 1974 and 5 hepatitis B vaccine, according to the contracts and the documents that I was able to dig up in the archives of the nation's medical libraries. Now, why is that important? Because you see on this document, sent to the National Cancer Institute by Lytton Bionetics in 1970, published in 1971, it says Australian antigen. Look down the list of A's. You see the AUAG, before it was called hepatitis B, today you have hepatitis A, B, C, D, E, F, G, because they've created various strains in the laboratories. They're virtually all labs, all uh, creations of largely New York University Medical Center, another documented biological weapons contractor, according to the United States Congressional Record, whose first researcher in the hepatitis field, Saul Krugman's name goes down in medical infamy as conducting genocidal studies on Willowbrook State School mentally retarded children in Staten Island who was the first people to be injected with the Australian antigen then later renamed hepatitis B because he felt that they were cancer triggers and he was using the children at Willowbrook now this is in the medical textbooks on right today the definitive textbooks in medical bioethics cites Krugman, Krugman's, Krugman's name Paul Krugman in medical infamy but that was A-U-A-G that he first took before it was called hepatitis. So if you want to mine for the silver and gold in population control as a United States Army biological weapons contractor under a United States Army military contract, as Saul Krugman was, you would use the hepatitis B virus or previously called 
Australian antigen, A-U-A-G. Why was it called the Australian antigen? Because I believe firmly that the Japanese and were conducting experiments uh, in, uh, in the area of Australia and the aboriginal new areas of New Guinea. And I believe that they left behind them certain biologicals that included the Australian antigen. So that's the number one liver cancer as well as now other cancer triggers. Here is your proof that I'm not lying when I say to you that the Denver International Airport, wherein these murals are, is an actual temple or a shrine to the Freemasons. This is the dedication capstone in Denver Airport. You see there's a Freemasonry symbol, the center of it, and it says, to the New World Airport Commission, its place dedicated, laid by, dedication capstone was laid by the most worshipful Prince Hall Grand Lodge by Claude W. Gray Grandmaster, and yet there's another one, another Grandmaster, Benjamin H. Bell. Why are there two? One is black, the other is white. Freemasonry from the beginning is a racist organization. Now, let's go back and just look at some highlights regarding the book Death in the Air in regard to non-lethal warfare and the CIA. Here in America, we've got our Central Intelligence Agency, as you're going to learn, is ultimately controlled by British Secret Service and the British Royal Family. But they are involved, they've been engaged in non-lethal warfare and biological weaponry. And interestingly enough, here's review and here's a wake up. Did you know that all of America's biological weapons program is actually a subordinate part of the mass mind control and population control program called MKUltra? You've heard about MKUltra programs, like the LSD experiments. By the way, I remember there was a fellow named Frank Olson. You remember he was a CIA operative and researcher who, interestingly enough, linked to this lecture, was studying anthrax for the Central Intelligence Agency. This word just recently came out. It was published in the Mercury News in the last couple of weeks. I spoke to his son, Eric Olson, because he's a dentist. I am a dentist myself. We had uh, communication. And Eric has spent the last two decades trying to bring the perpetrators of his father's death to justice. This was the Frank Olson, Dr. Frank Olson, who was given LSD and then hit over the head, killed, and then thrown off of a hotel balcony or out of a hotel window in New York back in 1953. He apparently held, had held some high-level classified intelligence regarding anthrax, and apparently he was taken out for that. This just recently came out in the news. But the whole program of biological weaponry that the CIA was engaged in was actually a subordinate part of the mind control and mass population control program that they conducted the LSD experiments for and a variety of other metals and manipulations and, and uh, intoxications. Ultimately, to get control of people's minds, attitudes, thoughts, behavior, what is in House Bill 2977 and 3616, Kucinich's bill, talks about psychotronic warfare being conducted from space, satellite technology, to put thoughts into people's heads, to change moods, cause depression and ultimately coercion for a form of slavery in which not, the population would not know they are a slave, consistent with a report from Iron Mountain. So this is a revelation. You have to understand that the biologicals, anthrax, smallpox, all of these fall under the realm, ultimately, of mass mind control and population control, including depopulation. I don't know of another author who is stating that. Clearly, that's the truth. MK Ultra was not just about helping our servicemen and women who fell into the hands of the enemy prevent 